Hey, everybody. Welcome to another fantastic episode of the Panic Attacking Podcast, the podcast where you look at anxiety through a comedy lens. I'm Andrew Chavon. And I'm Steven Rogers. This is the only the intro, everybody. So if this is the first time you're listening, we already recorded. I'm just going to sum up what we talked about to make it easier for you guys, I guess, as a roadmap for this episode. <laughs> I don't know. understand. I, can't, I don't know why we do this. I guess as a teaser. I, it's I, a teaser. Talk. We love who doesn't want to build up the anxiety on an anxiety podcast. <laughs> well, that's what we're doing here, everybody. So Stephen has a jaw dropping announcement that mainly affects me. I don't know if it'll affect <laughs> you guys that much, but I think, the, I think the, the diehard fans will uh, love this story. Yeah, it would, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but it's a life changing event for both of us. Yes. I don't think it will affect you guys at all. <laughs> doesn't really affect Steven's career at all, but it affects his life in a huge way. It affects way. the podcast. It affects the podcast in a better better way. I cocked, I get into the anxiety of being with people you don't know in a car and you know having to ask about the AC and phone charging when you don't really know them and and fixing something. And that's true. Oh yeah. Fixing something in public. Uh, yes. And the, we get into one listener topic of the anxiety of tall bridges and low guardrails. Right. So Dr. Deb joins us at the end for that. We ask her some questions at the very end, but she gives that listener some advice. We make a ton of good jokes. We might put it in the clip. It's going to be great. So stay <laughs> tuned, everybody. Uh, as always, $5 a month gets you bonus content at Panic Attacking on Patreon. I don't know yes. how to search it, but Google Patreon and Panic Attacking. You'll see it. Five dollars gets you bonus episode a week. And, and truly, are you if you're not a member of the YouTube, please subscribe to the YouTube. All you got to do is hit that button. You'd be doing us a huge favor. Yeah, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and you get to see us. Yeah. So that's cool. And you get to see all of our faces and everything we're referencing in each other's things. <laughs> so please do it. It's going to be a blast. Uh, stay tuned for the music. Stay tuned for the music. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm Stephen Rogers. I'm Andrew Chavone. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Zoom world. This might be one of the last Zoom ones we do before we move in in person. I, I think you're right. I think the days of us uh, Zoom recording are coming to an end. Yeah, we just put to bed our live Zoom show, which bittersweet about, you know, it's good to put that close that chapter of that book so <laughs> the so pandemic book <laughs> so bittersweet truly i i, I want to thank everyone that came out uh not just last night but to all of them i know there's some listeners that aren't weren't able to make the last few and and uh no hard feeling anyone that came to even one that means the world and if you're diehard and really want to see it, it's on our Patreon for, for the subscription, $5. Yes. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're great ups. They're really fun. And, uh, I mean, and if you like those, you just keep listening to the podcast because it's the same thing, just no stand-up. Yeah, right. Oh, man, I feel like my mic is really hot. Is No, you're not coming off hot. I'm not coming up. Okay, I'm maxing out over here. I'll just keep an eye on it. Um. And full disclosure to the listeners, I'm a little uh, nauseous, so I'm drinking a lot of seltzer. So if I'm coming off uh, gassy, I apologize. What, what's going on, man? I had no idea. I just a little uh, uh, tipsy, so not uh, not drunk tipsy, but just woozy. So I was chugging back the old seltz. <laughs> <laughs> tipsy from your stomach? Yeah, yeah. Jeez. But uh, anyways, let's... Uh, Oh, let's get to the big news. You teased this on the live show. I have no idea what you're going to say, and I want to hear it. I, I really, I'll be thinking I, about the whole episode. Great. I'm going to, for the sake of the story, I'm going to drag, I'm not dragging it out, but I'm going to give you the, I'm not leading with the big reveal. Okay. So stepping stones to the stepping big reveal. Yeah. All right. Let, I'm okay. My legs are stretched. <laughs> my, my laces ready? are tied tight. Let's, let's get into did, the stairs. And you, you did inhale an orange before I hit record. So you, you're all, you're all, uh, uh, hi, hydrated. <laughs> you're all, uh, I got my should. vitamin C for sure. And now yeah, there we go. I told you before we turn the mics on, but there's literally a graveyard of rinds around me. 
and I'm now fiddling with a rind. Uh, I don't know if you I can would, tell. I do. I do want to. Do you always have something fidgeting in your hands? Always, yeah. Sometimes I I carry around our our trademark panic attacking stress balls in my jacket pocket. Yeah, and I will squeeze it if I'm talking to somebody. I uh, I've noticed that about you. I have. I mean, it's probably really obvious what I'm doing. I mean, I hope. But last time you were here, <laughs> good point. Don't ever keep them in your pant pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Last time you were here, I had a post-it note stack uh, on on the table that we recorded. And when you left, there was a million post-its everywhere crumpled from – it looked like I was writing a novel and gave up. Yeah, one post-it <laughs> post had a snowflake. The other one was a fortune teller folded. <laughs> yeah, you made a swan at one point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's get into it. So – uh, a good friend of the pod uh, and past guest, Joe List, uh, okay. had texted me uh, and and Caitlin going, hey, got a situation. We want to have uh, Sarah and I, another past guest, uh, want to have lunch with you. And we want you to look at an apartment that has opened up in our building. What? The earth? <laughs> and this is not the big news? Not the big news. What the hell? <laughs> that would be so cool. You'd be in Astoria. So, oh we... my god! <laughs> <laughs> Let me right, tell you. Yeah, if you was the first episode listening, I'm in Astoria, Queens. He is in the middle of nowhere, Brooklyn. Yes, I'm I mean, I don't want to poop on his parade. If you did, I love bed. I love bed sty, and I never thought I would. I love it here, but bed uh... and breakfast sty, <laughs> bunk bed. Yeah, when I don't make the bed, it's a bed sty, and. Uh... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> how, many, how many beds can you fit in that sty? <laughs> I gotta get this uh, sty removed. <laughs> uh, so um, we uh, we go out there for for lunch. We go and we look at and first things first. Uh, uh, Joe's like, you got to look at the place before you, you come and have lunch with us. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneeze. <sighs> so he has like his landlord owns it or something. <laughs> Yeah, he's got a landlord, and there's a it's a totally different guy's place. So we we get and Caitlin's like, we don't we don't want it. It doesn't have what we want. I've asked about what they have in there, so don't get your hopes up. We'll just get the the contact information and tell them to put us on a list for any other openings because it doesn't she's, have. She's two, saying she's saying this before you even look in the place. Before we even look at it, because it doesn't have two bedrooms, which we do need. Because we have giant uh, office stuff, and we want to record in our home, and it also doesn't have a, a pair of people that <laughs> live with. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have a cat. It doesn't have a cat jungle gym, which uh, we now need. And so, uh, so we get there, and I I have to come separately because Caitlin had a a point a, a chemical peel or whatever. I think she was being dropped in the the ace chemicals like in the joker movie but um oh man that's what i was gonna go for she goes in the chemical theater comes out <laughs> i show up she's in harley quinn uh costume and got a baseball bat <laughs> let's put a smile on their face <laughs> <laughs> so uh i'm like all right it would be great i'm literally a maybe 12 minute walk from your apartment but i don't Here's the thing. I'm I purposely did not tell you cuz I didn't want to get your hopes up. Oh man. And uh I'd be fr I'd freak. Well, when was so, this again? What day? This was uh today's Sunday. It was Wednesday. Oh man. So um we get there and I know nothing really. And and also obviously I lived in Astoria for 3 years doesn't take much to sell me on that so it's mainly caitlin did all the talking and everything so i know nothing when i get there okay get there it's in his build it's in joe's building guy greets us lets us in shows us his place he's got a dog that's uh, all over us and and he's showing us the place okay and and uh, we get in there and he's like all right so there's our bedroom down there there's the second bedroom right there and i look at caitlin i'm like there's two bedrooms, and Caitlin didn't know. He's showing us around the place, 
And then he's like, all right, now let me take you to the backyard. She didn't know about the backyard. There's a backyard. We're walking around there. That's a big apartment. And uh, looking at all the place. And uh, I'm like, man, this is this is nice. It's too bad we won't be living here. And uh, <laughs> in this great apartment. That... <laughs> in this great apartment that's here. Yeah, you, you did a lot of research on, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if this guy uh, did it in a... <laughs> in a coded message or redacted the files he sent you but I, yeah i want to question this research did she just look up <laughs> apartment in the dictionary i honestly i think she didn't do much because she was like there's no way we're not ready it's too soon it would have to be may 1st which is way ahead of any timeline we had so we're looking around and uh then we uh we go well thanks and then we have lunch with uh joe and sarah great hang really fun at the bel air diner where oh and- wow yeah, where you and I hung out when they were doing shows in the parking lot. I'm a frequent uh, patron there. Yeah, uh, five bucks a month. And did, uh, did you? Yeah, the uh, bonus content. You get to watch <laughs> how the burrito is made. And we get and we get there to the Bellard Diner. They have these outdoor dining the like, bubbles. This, they don't have the bubble. Well, they didn't have the bubbles when we were there. They had just like a built roof with pillars there's not and then the plastic walls yeah that's behind the place right yes yeah and uh the wind was blowing and it was like creaking and it looked like it was just gonna fall on us like it was just very flimsy yeah i see that all the time and they have pipes that go to the building like their their heat in the building goes (laughs) up through pipes and into that plastic where you're sitting did you feel that at all i was like how's that working and then the and then the waiter was like, "Oh, you guys are choosing to be out here, huh? Instead of uh, inside." And we were like, "Well, it's it's eighty degrees. We wanted to hang out in the sun." Yeah, it was a like, beautiful uh, week. Yeah, he's like, "I guess." And he's like giving us all this grief, and we're like, "Oh, good, great to feel guilty while we have lunch with our friends." And uh, we would eat and hang out, and and Joe's pushing us on the place, and. I'm just keeping him quiet and Caitlin's being quiet and we're eating. And then the guy comes over and gives us more grief and then drive home. And the whole thing is we did not plan on, we're not planning on moving, none of that stuff. And now it's like we have this secret because we didn't tell Chloe and Jeff. So because we had no intention of leaving. Yeah, and they, have a swing, and, they have a we, couple swinger pad. <laughs> yeah, we come home <laughs> to the, the, the Shag Palace. And, uh, <laughs> they need a couple there at all times yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to arouse them or something. <laughs> and uh, we, cu- we come home, and there's this big secret over our head, and I'm like, oh, boy. And then uh, Caitlin's like, well, let's have a talk. And uh, she's like, I'm 80-20 on the place. 80 in favor? 80 in favor. Oh, man. I'm getting goosebumps. And I'm like... And uh, also, um, my my skin hair is prickling up. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, your Amazon delivery of uh, the whole Goosebumps R.L. series. Stein. <laughs> I'm like, oh, say cheese and die. Oh, oh also, your story is great. The What was the name of the... the man? Not the mannequin. The dummy. There was... was uh, I think it was... Slappy. Was Sla- Slappy, yeah. Slappy Swanson, uh, <laughs> Samsonite. I was way off. A weird story tied into that. I mean, I love Goosebumps, big fan. But my friend from high school, we were in a band together, and he moved to LA and started music. And for some reason, he he produced a music video for Goosebumps the movie. Oh my god! It was Jack Black singing a song about Goosebumps. Is this the the um? the guitarist friend yeah wow and then i was like that's pretty cool man he's like sending me pictures of him and jack black and then what what i didn't wasn't really impressed by that was i'm impressed by is in the music video the head talks the slappy is in the music and he does the voice oh slappy (laughs) oh yeah yeah jack black does yeah no no my friend does oh my god jack black is rl stein and my friend in the music video only goes ha ha goosebumps with the head and i was like holy shit <laughs> your friends with slappy slappy yeah <laughs> eight degrees of slappy slappy gave me nightmares for the longest time yeah that cover was frightening all the covers are what scared me to death oh god and you look at them now you're like these are pretty dumb and yeah yeah 
And they got, I think kids started mom, like mom started complaining that the kids were scared of the covers because later on it's like, he wrote like a book about how the eggs were evil. I don't know if you ever. Yes, yes, yes. And then it's like a picture of eggs that are dripping down and they have a face. And I'm like, all right, this isn't scary at all. <laughs> yeah, it's not, he's like, all right, what, he's looking around. What's not scary? Okay, I guess uh, Cadbury eggs. <laughs> yeah, he's eating breakfast. Like, what idea can I have? Yeah, hey. I, guess, uh, I guess if socks came to life. I'm pretty sure there's one with a sock coming to life. <laughs> I think he was looking around his apartment. Just looking at things, yeah. Oh, man. Like, uh, the scary sausage? No. no the no, eggs. No, that won't work. <laughs> They're mm. evil and something. I guess a, I guess a coffee mug that uh, that's angry. If, uh, you look, if you look at his catalog, it is plant. There's a one with a plant. Yeah, evil. there's a plant. There's garden gnomes. <laughs> there's garden gnomes, so he probably came yeah, home he looked in work, the front yard. <laughs> tripped over one. <laughs> I started writing. <laughs> Oh man. And there's one that's just called Nightmare on Shocker Street, which I mean which isn't PG that? at all. Isn't what? there one where the car is evil too? I think that's a Stephen King book, but I wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if there was a goosebumps of the like, evil car. Of course. But... Um so we're uh she tells me 80-20 in the place. And I'm very careful because I don't want to push a story uh, on someone that that isn't as into it and then have her i'm i'm very quiet in this this thing because i don't want to push my partner into a place that she doesn't want to live yeah this is a deep cut but you're like the uh you're you're like a pokemon hunter in the safari zone you know sometimes i get scared and run away exactly i i gotta get my poke flute and uh <laughs> the super ball <laughs> yeah yeah and and hope that i play the right tune so, so she's like, let's sleep on it. And I'm like, and, and also that night we, we hung out in the backyard with Chloe and Jeff and some friends. And I, and I was back there with this secret getting sad. I was like, Oh, I love this backyard. And I love hanging out with these people. I, I, and, and a year ago, I didn't want to live in Brooklyn. And now I'm, I'm closer to all these people and I do care about them and I would miss them. Yeah, I would. Uh, I have some contrarian opinions, but I, I'll let you finish your story. <laughs> oh man, I know they're joking, contrarian, but oh, I just uh, mean about moving out of that place. Oh I'm not, well, that's, I'm not saying about your hang. No, but I, oh, about... I got you. Well, and then that, that's the thing. She's like, tomorrow we'll just talk to people and see what they think. Like, our, we'll ask some friends for advice. And I'm like, well, I can't call Andrew. Because I need a unbiased opinion. I really didn't know where the story's going because I, I have so much to tell you to well, you have share an apartment with another couple. Is <laughs> that's bizarre? Well, to me it's bizarre. I don't <laughs> but that's, that's one of the reasons I didn't I didn't call you is you live there. Of course you you would want me closer and, and all these other things. So I was like, I gotta call people that don't live in a story. Of course, my entire contact list is a uh, guy that lives on 38th street guy that lives on 34th street <laughs> guy that works at the bagel store <laughs> in Astoria. So i call my my parents my parents were super helpful and and all that and they're like yeah just don't force your partner to do something they don't want to do and i think dr what about, Deb what about your other partners the ones that live with you <laughs> i think dr deb would be proud of me and then uh so we end up talking to the the roommates about it, and they took it very well, and and we're, we're very open to it. And they're like, open relationship about it. Yeah, they were like, oh well, well I guess it's too late to start swinging, and <laughs> they're um, putting in auditions. And <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden I saw a guy that looked just like me come in. And... Yeah, you're seeing the rental applications come in for to replace you, and they they include naked photos. Yeah, a guy came in. I'm I'm auditioning for the role of Stephen. <laughs> I was like, what? And uh, so then Caitlin and I go for a, a walk and uh, do a little chatting. And she's like, I'm in. And I'm like, what? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, Me yes. <laughs> yes. So, well, I don't know where it's going. buddy. Guess what's happening? <laughs> May 1st, I'm moving to Astoria. Dude, this is the sun is shining right now it's actually pouring rain in the middle of the night but the sun is shining I, the song aquarius has started playing <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe it yeah Dude, i'm not gonna get too excited until i get did you sign the lease tuesday 
Wow. Okay. I'll, I'm not going to get super excited until that happens, but well, yeah, likewise, but, uh, you're the, I couldn't wait to tell you, uh, but that's, that's what's happening, man. I am super psyched. I, I mean, this is the right move for the main reason of you got to live by yourself with your cu- girlfriend, <laughs> this couple oh, yeah. thing with like the parade of like, Every time I'm in, in the main room, it's like a dorm hang. Like, <laughs> like who is, who are these people? <laughs> like, you know. yeah, there's uh, somebody studying for the bar, and, and uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a guy, the uh, guy doing a keg stand. <laughs> right, there's a barista there, like making everyone coffee, and you know, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a big step to you know you you and your relationship, and you as a person, and. Plus, you're by me, and it's awesome, of course, I, I, and I hate driving me where you are, but... <laughs> uh, I, yeah. And I went to drive home from the apartment. I think it's, like, 10-minute walk from you. I, we'll talk off air what the streets are, but... Yeah. I think I know where he lives because uh, he was talking to me about some of the places around, and I was like, yeah, but I never asked exactly, but... We'll oh, talk oh. off air where he lives. So oh, I yeah. I get super excited, but... Any anywhere in a story is better than the middle of nowhere world where you are, where uh, you know. Oh yeah, but uh, panic attacking uh, is going to be back to local, dude. So cool, yeah. I'm super psyched. And now we now I can see you when it's not a business call like this. <laughs> now we can hang out all the time. We can hang out at the bagel store, and uh, man, I'm super excited. And you know we can set up at the studio uh you know we have sat up here and Mm -hmm. we can like if you're here all the time you and me can decorate it or something oh yeah we can put uh uh paper bags all over the place to hyperventilate in (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah whatever i'm i'm psyched and a oh, lot yeah. of comedians live around here. I mean, you know, we could have Joe yeah, and Sarah. I one on. that's going to live next door to me. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, Joe and Sarah could be easy guests and whatever. <laughs> Man, that's so cool. And QED is opening up again. I'm I'm a stone throw away from you. I'm pretty positive. I can't wait to hear the address, but I I can't believe this story. This is the big news, or this is the step. This is this is there, is is there even big. bigger news. This is the big. I had to hide it. Because you guessed it immediately, of course, which so I had to guess it a little bit. Well, I'm happy Caleb came around. I mean, I think she's gonna like the neighborhood. She's never lived here. Yes, it's um uh I'm I'm putting it in the chat. And we could double date with uh Maddie and you and Caitlin and wow, yeah, that is um pretty close, yeah. Oh yeah. Um there's some good places around there too to eat. It, it's like a two minute walk from my old spot. Do you live right on the avenue or on the street? Corner. Okay. Cool. But does yeah. your window, do you know what your window faces? Because it faces the avenue. It could be a little the street. Noisy. The street of the avenue or the street of the street? The street of the street. Oh, great. Okay. You're going to be fine then. Oh, yeah. Because the avenue gets a little noisy. Oh yeah, but I, cool man. That's a uh, I'm telling you, that's a hot neighborhood. That's a cool neighborhood. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I know. <laughs> I mean, well, compared to where you were, right, right. Well, not too far. It's not too far from where you were. Yeah, but Maddie and I go to that part of town to eat all the time. Well, there's a good sushi play. I know you don't like sushi, actually, but. Uh, I, hey, whatever now. I'll do what I'll, I'll do. And it. you know what it's really close to? I think. Our therapist. Oh, yeah. It's like literally right there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be able to yell what, how I'm feeling from my window. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be able to stop by after therapy. Decompress. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. This is, I, uh, I'm super psyched. This is crazy. I, I forget that I, I couldn't wait to tell you and uh, you reacted better than I hoped. <laughs> it still this, hasn't hit me yet. This is like, I'm still like in disbelief. I can't. True, I, I am as well, this. but truly I thought you were going to be like, oh, cool. And I'm be like, oh, I knew our, a year away was too long. <laughs> no, this is great. I mean, it's like perfect. Well, it's May 1st, so that stinks that I got to wait a month, but. 
It's happening, though. Normally, it's like, oh, hey, six months from now, I'll be in this place. I found out a month before. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. So it's bit it's bitter it's it's bittersweet for me because I like where I am and I like who my uh my uh friends that live nearby I got closer with them but uh the people I'm close with <laughs> are, are my neighbors now yeah and plus you can go there and hang out in the backyard whenever you want you that's know, the plan um oh you put it in the I saw you texted me and then you also put it in the chat yep <laughs> uh super cool man um yeah you can hang out with them and uh, you, whenever you go to the tiny cover you can hang out with your old roommates and oh you know, yeah but you're gonna be like a new man having your own control over walking around in my underwear and yeah not worried about food and like you technically didn't live with kaylin you live with a <laughs> <the> family <laughs> yeah, <know>? yeah. <laughs> can't wait to put my uh exercise bike in the living room it's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> yeah a good old time second bedroom that's pretty cool so you're going to turn that into like a writing like the same way you had before yeah like gonna this an, is now that's what i'll be doing you're gonna have the extra bed in there no bed but uh we're gonna take in that extra bed that you no had that's bed. not ours this is there <laughs> yeah it's just there i think Man, this is piles of reasons to get out of that place. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Some hotel bed and where you're working. You don't even yeah, know what it is. just comes in and takes a nap during my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Well, cool, man. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I know you long enough to know how you process uh, so you got excited and now you're uh, now you're in disbelief. But I, I'm looking. <laughs> I really, yeah, you nailed it. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I feel yeah, like I'm until I answer the door, you're not going <laughs> to believe. Yeah, until you get the keys, I feel like. But that's a good sign. If Kaylin agreed to move there, I mean, that opens the door, even if you don't get the place on Tuesday, which you probably will. But Yeah, let my love Do they have to do the a door. credit check or anything on you guys? Because I know Kaylin's credit is... Hey, I mean, that makes two of us. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you're all set with that? Did they still have to run it or anything? Uh, I don't believe so. I think we're just signing. Perfect. Okay. I think we great. had enough uh, recs. You didn't have to fill out an application. Honestly, I might need you there. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know if I need my my contract reader. Well, I, but when you met the man, he said, "Just come Tuesday and sign." That's it. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Well, Greek people in Astoria wheel and deal a little bit differently. So. Oh man. And is he on the nose with what you just said? I mean, I didn't even have to guess. I mean, I did guess, <laughs> but I didn't even really have to throw a wild guess. No. Nope. <laughs> can't, uh, can't believe it, but yeah, that's the that's the big big news. Man, I'm already planning on what we can do. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean... You're by the tiny cupboard where you are, which is a place where, where there's shows in, in Brooklyn, but you're not near anywhere else. Like you're not near the clubs in the city, the nope. other clubs in Brooklyn. Nope. You're not near God knows you're not near any places in Queens. You're not <laughs> no, you know, I, you're, to get to Jersey, you have to cross <laughs> three state lines. I mean <laughs> you're literally near nothing. You're close Jersey to Jersey is closer you to, to you. <laughs> Yeah, you're close to Long Island you clo than you are to Manhattan. Oh, yeah. And uh, I had to go to Tiny Cover the other day, and I was like, Jesus Christ, the, the way the <laughs> GPS took me. It was outrageous. So, <laughs> Well, there you go. That, that's, my, that's my thing. Man, wow. It's so cool. Yeah. I will say now for my anxiety thing, one, I'm worried it's going to, because I like it, I'm worried it's going to fall through. And and two, I'm worried. It's just, like you already touched on. I've never lived with a, my partner alone, so I'm like, oh, is she gonna find out I'm boring and she doesn't like like because you don't have like 50 people to talk to yeah. when you're in the living. yeah. I can't hide in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> How's your how how are you and Kayla's relationship? Well, I just kind of blend in to the. <laughs> <laughs> I let the other people do the talking, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, that's uh, that's that's my thing. That's the the whole uh, kit and caboodle here. Yeah, the the Boeing caboodle. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's unbelievable, man. I'm. It's just gonna be like the old days. I did feel like there was. Uh, you, what were you, you know, guessing? What were you thinking? Well, I saw you posted on the indoor outdoor comedy group that you're uh, recording. Well, we can talk about that in the bonus. Okay, but is uh, that changed? Because I was like, that's earlier than I thought he told me. No, that's uh, that's the date. That had a, has always been the date. We'll get we'll we'll do it in this episode. But oh, we'll okay. go back. And I thought forth. I thought you were gonna say something about that. Like you got moved up because some other reason or no, but we'll, we can talk about that after we get into your stuff if there's time. But uh, man, time. I'm, this is crazy. Oh yeah, wow, it's game changer, man. And uh, <laughs> <clears throat> you're in close to Greenpoint too, which is like another comedy place. And <clears throat> yeah, well, my thing thing is, um, it was. Uh, I hard obviously a pandemic, but hardly seen seen we like when we lived when I lived out there, you and I would hang out, not comedy related. We would just hang out, and we haven't done that in a long time. So I was well, like, yeah, you oh. had your uh, your bordello crew. You had your <laughs> you had your intimate relationships with people you live with. That's fair. Uh... <laughs> You were uh, oh man, me and him used to be so close, and now we now it's just business. And I'm like, and then when I heard this, I was like, I'm gonna get to hang out with Andrew again. You are, yeah, and it's gonna be cool. Yeah, we're gonna. I mean, it's. I, I think the best part about this is this is the final nail in the pandemic coffin for our chapter of our lives because you moved there right when it started, right? <laughs> Didn't you? I did. I Didn't you move it like the day of lockdown? You were there. Yeah. <laughs> i uh i i i fled to brooklyn like it was mexico yeah so i mean that just made the distance seem further because we couldn't hang out anywhere anyway it was right. weird even because you had like 100 people at your house every day so it'd be weird to, <laughs> for covid restriction reasons but yeah when you did come over your beard was twice as long because yeah was i know i was like ah, who are you <laughs> you had a walking stick <laughs> and a sleeping bag <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right I, I was all grizzled i you know i had an oxygen tank um but uh yeah so that made it feel like the distance because we couldn't do what we used to do which was hang out at because they were they were all closed or out of business you know so. oh yeah there was nowhere to yeah there was no safe place to meet like a coffee shop or whatever because yeah. you can go inside so what are your um any reservations about leaving the place that you're in aside from Caitlin? The social uh, uh, hangs were always fun, but we have a backyard at our new place. And I'm telling you, you're going to be so busy with comedy. I mean, my club's open on the, uh, I think next week. I'm my whole week's filled. Like I'm like, uh, Oh, well get your manager to, to, to represent me. Will you <laughs> oh. <laughs> got nothing? I'm just like, but it's anxiety driven. I'm like, oh God, I'm got to be busy every night again. I can't wait. I'm so hungry for that. Uh, I'm it's going to get it. even busier when more things come back. Cause oh, yeah. that club in, in Queens hasn't opened yet. I'll be so much closer to an airport. Two. Oh. Yeah. LaGuardia. You could walk there if you want. <laughs> well, we know how that worked out. Yeah. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it was on a bonus or the regular. It was a past episode some at some point. Where I talked about walking there and it was horrible. And I almost got arrested. But <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm on a watch list now. Oh, man. So what are your thoughts? What do you? How do you feel? What, I'm what, super psyched. This is just like you said, game-changing experience. We can hang out all the time. Because before it was hard to hang out with you when we're not recording because there's traffic to get there and there's traffic to get back. Yeah. So, and I have to find parking when I get back. Now I can leave my car and still go home and we can hang out. Beautiful. Yeah. My so dad, gonna... when I told him, said, you should find out uh, where Andrew parks his car and uh, steal his spot one time. 
you can park in my name it's easier to park in my neighborhood than where you are i feel like so oh wow park by me yeah and and parking's even easier now that they change the the day restrictions how it's only the, the last day of the week that you have to move your car oh boy yeah so wow man that's so cool i'm psyched i'm super excited and i feel like this take our friendship and the podcast to the next level it's the boost we it's it's like uh the the live shows ended and then this new thing happened it's crazy i i mean i've missed it before but the spontaneity of us recording you know i would we'll just walk over to your house and pick up the mic and you know it was more relaxed than uh than <laughs> coming yeah, all the way there that's planning so it was looser yeah, and every time I'm there, it's always like a tight schedule with either you or me where it's like, okay, we got to start at this time and then leave at this time. Now I feel like it could be more loose. And Yeah, like you would come over and record on Tuesday and you're like, I have a gig on Thursday, and so I'd have to leave right now. <laughs> yeah, there's, I looked up on Waze. There's a lot of traffic. <laughs> and you're um, you're going to be closer with Joe List. I mean, you guys are going to be – because he hates your apartment too. He, all he of his thoughts my are my thoughts. He hates how far I am. He constantly he hates tells your neighborhood. Me. <laughs> He's like, why? And then I told Tony Deo, and he, and he was like, oh, so glad you're moving back from Montana. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot Tony's up here. Yeah, Tony's up there. It's a, it's a game changer, everybody. And your old roommate, Erica, is just moving out. Did yeah, you know she that? just left. Yeah, that's crazy. Changing of the guard. Changing of the guard. And I feel like Maddie and Caitlin are going to get closer, too, now. Oh, for sure. I was like, do you know how it's going to be so easy for Maddie to book Caitlin on her podcast? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then you can just come over and record with me. Yeah, that's absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. new. It's. A, I feel like it's a, a rejuvenation for the pod. I didn't think we were uh, there was a dip at all, but it truly will be like the old times. Yeah, I didn't think so either, but yeah, it will. Uh, I got excited. I, I'm excited. Yeah, and plus, you and your crew. I mean, you guys booze up like on a Wednesday night. <laughs> you know, like yeah, I think uh, I you think guys you could are like boozing, boozing <laughs> all of the time. I think you could sell my blood, <laughs> <laughs> but you'd have to be 21 to buy it. You, your situation reminded me a lot. I mean, you never had the college experience because you're community college, and your 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 college basically was the Syracuse Funny Bone. Yes. Um, but yeah, your, exactly. Your college years were, you know, hanging out at the Jamba Juice next to the club <laughs> in the mall. Uh, so you probably had your college life, you know, in that quarantine. That, that Here, for sure. When I would go over there, I'm like, damn, this is just like when I <laughs> was in college, like the... the I gained drinking I gained, in the middle of the day. <laughs> I gained I gained weight. I asked my parents for money and you know, I, I, I look over. Jeff is like drinking a 40, eating a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, good lord. This man. Oh man. <laughs> Truly. I couldn't you I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I mean, it's fun, yeah, but I can't imagine doing it every day like you did. I can't imagine that. I'm too, too I, I already did it in college. I can't, I'm too old. I can't. I know you get you get tired after a, a healthy meal. I know, yeah. <laughs> Eating uh, you know, two hot dogs and one bun because he's you know low on money. So. I, th- I thought you, I thought <laughs> you're gonna the bun. I thought you're gonna use the rinds as pillows, honestly. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll be going from pork rinds to orange rinds. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Follow my lead over here. Is it true? I mean, like, is it? I, that's I, I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll go from drinking a liter to following the liter. <laughs> that, that's just my perspective. Have you really been drinking every night with those guys? Because that's what, in my head, you hear like. Not uh, in. And chugging beer. Like, not yeah. in 2021. Keg stands. In, in 2021, uh, that stopped. But in the 2020, when it, especially when it, like, when it went from. Oh, shows are back. Let, let's party. <laughs> and and then to shows are gone. Let's let's party. Let's yeah. <laughs> let's cope. <laughs> let's cope exactly. Jack, Jack and cope. And uh, <laughs> was it really every night? I can't. No, imagine. no, no, no. Oh, okay. no. But more than I've ever done. Uh, so you nailed it with the college experience. 
Yeah, that was. Plus, it, I had uh, pictures of uh, Sports Illustrated on the wall, and I had my class schedule on there, and <laughs> yeah, and, and like, I mean, in terms of like productivity in college, when I would step out into the main room and there'd be a dude on the couch drinking a beer at noon, I'd be like, "Oh, I guess I'll do this too." You know, I, does that ever happen to you? You couldn't have nailed it more if you tried, and it becomes like a time suck like so much of my college is just wasted time <laughs> like yeah i did not do good use of my time at all because of these freaks i live i mean you know not what i live with all the time but well every yeah. week when every two weeks when we would do panic attacking live i had to wring out ideas like a sponge <laughs> but now i uh when i'll have a i feel like it will go up the writing and everything I think so too, man. And you were like talking to me about how you're worried about your productivity. And I'm like, I think it's that place, but I don't want to tell you because you live there. <laughs> like, but now that you're leaving, I'm like, well, get out of there. You're, <laughs> you, you're, you need to know you're stuck with me. You can tell me whatever. You're your productivity is going to go through the roof out of that oh. place. I feel like it's a time warp. Yeah, let's do when, that when again. I would hang out after we recorded. I'm, I look at my watch. It's like 9 p.m. We finished recording at 3. And I'm like, what? Just sitting around watching movies with your roommates and you. I'm like, hey, do you want to watch the episode where they're stuck in the parking garage? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's this movie where they get frozen in time. <laughs> with time traveling Miller Lite. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, I, should have, I should have said this all on the Patreon, but I don't think your roommates listen anyway. But Well, it's not against... The, uh, it's not against I, them at all. I'm no. just saying... I, and you also have me agreeing, so <laughs> yeah, well, I'll go down with. I you. mean, they can't deny they're <laughs> drinking. No, I, everyone was in agreement when we uh, had that discussion. Yeah, uh, so uh, I, I'm happy for you, man. You're this is the step. I feel like you're living my life like in in shorter bursts. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the beard then. <laughs> yeah, that's coming. That's going to be a phase too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well I, I i couldn't wait to tell you your uh reaction warms my heart i was worried you would be indifferent no not at all this is good news wonderful well uh let's let's keep the the uh the, the train rolling then uh okay so if you guys went to the live show you'll you'd notice i was in the hamptons very nice House. I usually go there, and I think I talk about it on other episodes. I, mean, I recorded one episode live on Zoom with you at the Hamptons house. Yes, some, that's true. Yeah. I don't know why we did that, but I, I think you. I think you were stuck out there. Maybe, yeah. And I was stuck late again. They, they like didn't want to leave, and it was raining, and you know that's why we're, we're literally recording. It's nine thirty right now. We I never mean, record this late. I can't believe you didn't want to leave a rich person's house. Yeah, it's super rich. And I showed you they have a room just to read, a room <laughs> just to... They like so think many about, bathrooms. They get a room to think about the book that you just read, and then they... Yeah, get... like the compressing room, you know. They have a room just to look at your phone. <laughs> There's like so many rooms. It's like overwhelming. Oh, man. What's the craziest room? Probably the room I was in, the room just to read. Like just, okay, just two chairs and two lamps in a different room. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And they talked to them. I'm like, "What is this room?" They're like, "Oh yeah, that's part of a extension we did on the house. You paid to expand the house to put in this room. We wanted a room that we didn't know what to do with, so we got that, and then uh... we expanded our house to have even more rooms to not know what to do with. <laughs> we actually added a room to think about what rooms we want to add." Yeah. <laughs> so like the whole anxiety started just at the beginning where Maddie and I were talking about the uh the drive and she came like you know we're supposed to leave at 4 on Friday. She came in at 3:30. What if we carpooled because like couples, you know, two two it, it's six I'm sorry, three couples all together, six mm -hmm. people all together. The other the first couple which is Tobin and his girlfriend, which is also Maddie's friend, they met like she is comedy in the she did comedy for a little bit and didn't do it anymore but still stayed friends with those guys and then yeah. they met at a comedy party and now tobin and her are dating 
They've been dating for two years, he told me. Oh, wow. That went by fast. It's super fast. Yeah. So they're already at that house. And then Maddie comes in and is like, I wonder if Tobin has to date people with big houses because the so many doors he can fit in. <laughs> yeah. He's super. Yeah. He's very tall. He's used to just with, sitting in a room with his knees against his face. <laughs> so it's crazy that he can just put one leg in one room and another leg in a different room. They have uh, a leg room. Yeah. <laughs> They have they have elbow room too, uh, so yeah. So uh, she comes in. And she's, she's like, I have this super fun idea. I'm like, oh what? I'm like packing my bag. She's like, what if we carpooled with the other couple? And I'm like, no, no way. It's not fun at all. She's like, why not? I'm like, I'm gonna get stuck in the back. It's gonna be super uncomfortable. And she's like, no, no, no. You the boys will sit in the front. And the girls will sit in the back. And I'm like. I think I remember their car was small and, and, uh, she's like, so she talks me into it. And of course they pull up the, the couples in the front, the girl doesn't get out. So I have to sit in the back and, and it's just what I remember. It's super small. My, my knees, I feel like Tobin in a regular house. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like so much traffic and, it's always weird when you're in somebody else's car on like a trip, you know, they're nice enough to drive you. Uh, but I feel like weird, like being like, can you like turn up the AC? It's like blistering hot. And I'm like, I can't make any requests in someone else's car. I can't do anything. And my phone dies. Cause I'm too nervous to ask for a charger. You know, I'm just like in the back, like literally feeling like a, a, a guy in a microwave. Like, <laughs> like this you're is slowly a really spinning and humming. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like POV of a potato <laughs> is me. I like, and it's like stop and go. So it's like, uh, uh, just like rocking. And oh, hot. that, do you get car sick? I don't usually, but I was. I, oh, I, man. We weren't even out of Queens. I wanted to puke. And I, and I thought, like, I might puke right now. Is it worth the embarrassment of asking to turn on the AC or puking in somebody's car? AC. And I still risked it. I still risked it. <laughs> and then Maddie's like, I'm Maddie's like, I got to pee. And I'm like, me too. I just wanted to get out, <laughs> out of my mouth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just wanted to get out of there. <laughs> oh, man. Like driving around looking for a bathroom. And I can't find one. And finally they, they find a park with like a, porta potty in and i'm like ah that's good enough for me i just walked out and just stood behind the porta potty and pretend to went in did you puke no no i just needed fresh air well, oh so you went behind the porta potty porta potty <laughs> there, your, your i fresh didn't want to go in a porta potty if i don't have to pee I... <laughs> that <laughs> made me really puke i mean jesus <laughs> i need some fresh air let me go next to the outhouse <laughs> 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 oh god yeah it was uh and then i get back in the car and same mm. thing knees go up to my face can't how breathe. long is this ride so long it's like too long and by the time i get we finally get there i'm like disoriented i feel like i just got out of a cult <laughs> like i'm like who are what's food i don't know what's what life is <laughs> i've been abused for my whole All life i know is car <laughs> <laughs> yeah car is life life is car <laughs> <laughs> I just sit down. I don't even say a word. I don't even say hello. And then they have like a tray of snacks. And I just, <laughs> I'm like eating to get my strength. To... And Tobin's like, hey, uh... oh my God, my uh, Dr. Hey! Deb's popping in. Dr. Deb is here. Look at this. Let me, I'll pause it. Great. Yeah. So I'm uh, just eating to get my strength back. And, and, you know, Tobin is asking me about the, the oral roberts game or whatever and i'm like i can't even think right now man i'm my brain literally is fried <laughs> literally i'm boiled uh and then i like you know i shower i feel better after the shower but then i look at my bag and of course i don't i forget to pack my deodorant you know i always forget one thing so i gotta put on maddie's it's all like girly and powdery and it doesn't, <laughs> feels weird feels weird women's deodorant on a man's armpit Something's wrong about it's like women wearing women's underwear. Oh yeah, 
you would, yeah, that, you're like, do weird. people notice? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, what, what will they think? <laughs> it's all like smells flowery and yeah, it's pink. Right, yeah, it's lace. It's just uh, <laughs> a sling I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, uh, yeah, so I was like, it's just all automatically uncomfortable wearing the somebody else's deodorant. And then it's weird, like everyone wants to eat at a different time. We're all used to our own Corona schedules where we're like, we all eat at eight. <laughs> uh, well, well, I eat at six. Okay. <laughs> no, I eat at nine. We're all, we're all like different cats. And, yeah, I uh, never stop eating. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere at <laughs> McDonald's when they switch over from lunch to breakfast. But <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that was the main anxiety was, uh, me just not wanting to bother anybody, you know, and of course I'm not going to ask for extra deodorant. Um, oh, and what was super embarrassing is their dishwasher stopped working mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I just fixed mine. Let me take a look. And I like, you know, <laughs> unscrew something and water gets all over my pants and <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing and I screw it back. And then, uh, they all gather around me to watch me <laughs> fiddle with the dishwasher. And of course, somebody says, Andrew's a real plumber, even as the crack. And the, uh... my pants had sagged from the water. Everyone's looking at my ass. So embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. Oh, God. The whole house is just staring at my butt crack as I'm like poking things with the screwdriver. <laughs> But <laughs> I, I, it, it's something about there's a Seinfeld has a bit about it, but something about one guy fixing a thing, every guy's got to hover around them and watch. They, they're not helping at all, they're, they're not helping, they just make it worse. <laughs> it, it's, I don't know if it's a feeling of superiority when you don't fix it or they want to secretly learn how to fix it so they can be the fix it guy next time. I don't know what it is. A yeah, guy's always got to stand over you. Reminds me of like mon monkeys documentary about monkeys. Like one guy's playing with a stick, and they're all like, "Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I gotta look." They're taking bugs out of your hair while you're... yeah, right, right, yeah. I'm like suddenly all the women are around me, and I'm <laughs> the lead monkey. I I can see why it's a monkey thing because when you didn't know how to fix it, you were like, "Yeah, I was." Um, you know, uh, a tail started growing out of that crack. Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go get dinner. We drive around. And I forget what we do. We pick it up or something. And we drive back. The dishwasher works. And I'm like, oh, that was me. Yeah, I did that. I, I think it just. <laughs> you see a, a plumbing uh, van driving away and you're like, no, it was me. <laughs> that was me. Yep. That's it. That's an FBI Never... van surveilling somebody. Me unscrewing the hose and getting water all over my crotch. <laughs> That, that that fixed it for sure. Yeah, there was just too much water in it. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of the Everybody Loves Raymond episode when uh, Raymond tells his dad the the washer washing machine's broken, and he goes, "I'll look at it." And he comes back later, and he goes, "I'll tell you what's wrong with your washing machine. This part won't go back in." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so good. Uh Man, we, so we were fun. watching weird stuff at the at the beach house. We watched Kevin James's first comedy special, Sweat the Small Stuff. Oh yeah, and uh, it really is. I don't. I mean, it kind of some parts hold up, some parts don't. But some do, a lot don't. <laughs> his best line, and I still think about it, is when uh, when his girlfriend or his wife is like watch this part. And he's like, there's a giant screen. What else am I doing? <laughs> and she's like, no, really watch. So he goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> His face of pretending to really watch kills me. And I think about it every time uh, somebody tells me like, you gotta watch that this. That is part. really funny. Uh, oh, so yeah. So I, I wanted to take credit for the dishwasher fixing. Cause I'm like, this is worth you all looking at my butt crack. Like, right. This, of course. Everything's right in the world. You, you guys weren't looked at a man's butt for no reason here. <laughs> Something happened. Good thing you weren't, weren't wearing women's underwear. 
that would have been busted yeah and they're like why are you wearing a thong i'm like i left my deodorant at home <laughs> it's a long i'm in a story. car cult it's a long story <laughs> Oh my God! What a callback! Oh boy! That was great. Yeah. So that's it. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, we should uh, get into listener topics before we do. We're uh, very lucky to have uh, our uh, resident therapist uh, and frequent guest, over thirty years of experience in in therapy. Uh, Doctor Deb is is with us as always. Thank you for being here, Doctor Deb. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Doctor oh, Deb. My pleasure. My pleasure, yeah, you, guys. Usually listen to our stories. You, you missed them all, but we might just give you some highlights and then we'll, we need you for the listener topics for sure. Okay. For yeah, sure that's prof fine. Professional. We'll touch on uh, uh, mine real quick. I'm uh, moving in with Caitlin, my girlfriend, and this will be, I already live with her, but this will be our first time living just us together. Oh. And wor I'm worried that uh, <laughs> she's going to run. Right. So just full disclosure here, we told her, we paused recording and told her, and, and Dr. Deb freaked. Like, was Dr. Super... Deb was a huge fan of this. <laughs> and then we told her just now, and she goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as interesting the second time. And uh, I think she's trying to keep, keep the persona of Dr. <laughs> Deb, you know, she's keeping the professional. Well, uh, she just likes that I'm moving close to her son. Anyways, uh, you don't know. <laughs> I wonder who that is. <laughs> you don't know him. Uh, <laughs> but uh, one thing that's, uh, that uh, I am worried about is that uh, this will be my first time living with my partner, and I'm worried that uh, uh, because we used to live with other people, I never had to do most of the talking. So I'm worried <laughs> that she's going to find me boring. Wow. Uh well, actually, it might be easier to be together, um, you know, rather than have other people around. I don't know how many people you were I, living with, but I, I was I was, imagine be... the movie Animal House. <laughs> what it also looked like. Uh, yeah, there is a guy on our stairs that keeps playing the guitar. But uh... yeah, there's yeah the guy, there's... I, I think it, it might be easier and it'll certainly, you know, help you to, to focus on on your relationship, which is generally why people move in together to mm. see how they're doing in their relationship and make more of a commitment. Yeah, I think that's a good step. And you, I mean, when were you gonna, what was your end game there? <laughs> oh, I always intended to do it, but uh, this is the first time. Yeah, all right. I, I think it's going to be a great thing, and you guys are going to be super busy anyway, so it's going to be nice to come home to a place yeah. where you have the control. You know? Exactly. Somebody's yes. binging Breaking Bad. You're like, I guess I'll watch the last two seasons with this guy <laughs> for no reason. You can watch whatever you want to watch. You can Good point. pick off your feet. You don't have to talk to anybody if you don't want to. You know? Yeah, that's true. And you guys can develop your own routines and the way you want things Can't wait you'll be routine. in charge and make more couple decisions than having to include other people i think it's i think it's a great step and there's more accountability too you're like i made a mess so i'll clean it up because you yeah. know it's not like when you walk in and you're like oh i made a mess but there's 50 other messes that i don't know who made these <laughs> it's like 50 yeah. people are in my place that is, and you uh, don't have any surprises when you come home of who else is there, you know, yes. if your other roommates have company over, stuff like that. Great points. Oh, man. You're right. Yeah. All, all good things. Yeah, like Andrew said, I think there's a lot of pros to this. and, it, and it, It's all it's pros. Nice that, Literally all, yeah. it's, like, it's like English class, literature class, all pros. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dickinson, uh, <laughs> All other writers, <laughs> Poe. <laughs> your Sarah, your funny bone education is coming out. Yeah, uh, okay. but you'd okay. actually name more than I thought you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not Dickinson; it's Dickens. Well, I guess Emily Dickinson. Yeah, Emily Dickinson. Oh, okay. they're Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said I said Angelou, but uh, I I stepped on your punchline when I did it. Oh uh, no, it's fine. But the Jamba Juice, they don't have a lot of books there. So. 
thought you were eating your education when was uh, I go, back in the well in this smoothie there's spinach and uh <laughs> those are the ingredients <laughs> this was written by mr jamba <laughs> he knew what benzoate was <laughs> uh <laughs> And then, what? do you have do you have a, a thing for Doctor Deb, or should we get into the yeah, Doctor Deb? How do you approach uh, asking somebody to, you know, if you're in a car and there's no AC, you know, like how do you approach the asking somebody about it? I know it's probably easy just to be like, hey, can you turn that on? But what's like something that can just make it happen easier? Well, I I think just being um, assertive about it, using an I statement. I'm a little warm. Um, mm. it, is the air conditioner on or is it possible to put some air on? You know, that's true. I should have just said I'm a little warm and then they, they're they nice enough to figure that out. Yeah. Because when we rode around in the third couple's SUV, I had the window down because I was like, I can't believe I got some air. This is amazing. <laughs> have, have been in a car with air. <laughs> I have the control over a thing, and, and then the girl behind me said, "I'm actually getting a little cold," and I was like, "Oh God!" And then I rolled it. And this is like my apartment situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. man! So that's it. That thanks, Doctor Deb, for that. I think I think the I statement would work. I wish I could text myself in the past. <laughs> <laughs> man that would be a great time machine. Wait, you, you could use third person and say andrew th thinks it's a bit warm in here these pretzels are making me thirsty in here um <laughs> <laughs> so we got some listener topics i don't know i i think we should just read the ones that make sense because <laughs> there's some that there's are some that uh just their one word and you know i i we love you guys for writing in but you got to give us something to grab onto. Yeah, we want to we want to help uh, as many people as possible. I've got one here from Heftone. Uh, Heftone. Oh yeah, I think he's mighty <laughs> and mighty. I'm uh, I'm actually hone teft. So uh, <laughs> okay, um, uh, uh, he is he or she is uh, anxious around uh, tall bridges with low guardrails. Those all bridges with low guard. Oh, if you're walking across or driving. Oh, I'm imagining uh, like a trucker who's nervous about the bridge cutting his top off like a tuna can. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Um, but uh, seen that happen? Yeah. Do you, do you have any? I've seen there was a bridge in my hometown that was low and it had no trucks everywhere. Every sign it was like. In the Wiley e. Coyote cartoons with danger signs, <laughs> and they just kept driving, and then phoom, it would take off the top of the truck. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh man, yeah. Uh, I got that happens all the time in Queens because they they designed some of the highways so that poor people couldn't take buses. So there's like a big documentary about it if you guys want to check it out. But this guy Robert Moses, or I actually forget his name. So Dickinson. every five, every like couple of weeks, they're like, there's backed up our trucks on the main road. And you know, they show a picture of a, they just show a screenshot of a tuna can and tuna inside. <laughs> well, Dr. Deb, do you have any tips for people that uh, maybe have a fear of heights or a fear of falling and stuff like that? Right. Well, it, it's, I was wondering based on your comments, if what they're worried about was the low guardrail or is it a fear of bridges in general? I, I can't tell. Oh, I, yeah, it's true. If they, uh, if they watch um, Tron, are they like, oh God, Lloyd Bridges? <laughs> <laughs> I came to oh. see Jeff. Well, I came uh, to see yeah. Jeff Bridges. Oh, you know what? That's the guy. Yes. <laughs> Lloyd Bridges, I think, is a character in Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bridges. Messed it up. That could have been a clip. I messed it up so bad. I gotta tell you, this is one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's... Well, isn't um, Lloyd Bridges his father? I think Lloyd Bridges is his father. Yeah. But he isn't. Lloyd Bridges is an actor. Lloyd Bridges yes. is a name. Yeah. 
He was in um, some show back in the 60s. I um, can't think of what it was. Yeah, and but... he was an airplane. He was the guy I picked the wrong week to quit blank. Sniffing glue. Yeah, he was, a, he was an airplane, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Bridges is a not oh, an right. uncommon. Yes, uh, that's Jeff Bridges' dad, that guy? Yes. He's in a ton Bridges. of movies. Yeah. Man, Hollywood is like a, like, you know, um, what is it called? Nepotism. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Man. Bridges also was, had double billing because he was also Clue as well, well as uh, the actually, main guy. Actually, actually, there's a connection because I, I think he was, Lloyd Bridges starred in this show about uh, water. It was underwater or under sea or something like that. So it has to do with bridges. Anyway, the po Poseidon Adventure. No, no, it was a oh. uh, a weekly uh, show that came oh. on adventure how many, show. How many ships can sink? You gotta make a show out of them. <laughs> I, <laughs> he he was a sea, he was a deep sea diver. I think he, every he show, was underwater. Every episode opens with a guy on a boat. They're like, oh, and you're like, I wonder where this is going. <laughs> Down, <laughs> it's sinking. <laughs> It's underwater. Andrew, this uh, topic just fell off a bridge. Let's... I know. This topic sunk. Okay. So what is this topic again? Bridges. The, oh, yeah. Phobia about bridges. So uh, one of the things that you can do is to use my mindfulness uh, to do deep breathing, just like with the fear of flying that we talked about mm -hmm. and before. And do, do the deep breathing as you're going over the bridge to focus on the horizon and what's ahead, uh, but not focus, you know, or look at uh, the water, uh, mm -hmm. but to look ahead and focus on that. And then to have a mantra, I can do this, I can be safe, this will be okay, I'll be the other side in, in you know, soon. Uh, so just focus on that positive self-talk and deep breathe uh, while you're crossing the the bridge. And uh, and oh, if somebody great. asks you, and if somebody asks you, how's your bridge anxiety going? And you say, oh, it's under the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, Doctor Deb navigated troubled waters. I can't believe that she got through that without with all the things you said. <laughs> the whole time she's talking, I was setting up that joke in my brain. The focus Dr. Deb had through that entire thing is she deserves an award. <laughs> <laughs> right. What about Lloyd Bridges? Is it oh no, Tron, Jeff Bridges. I'm so mad at myself. He was in it, right? Jeff Bridges was Jeff in Bridges it, right? Was, yeah, yeah, okay. Dr. Deb, I find that's extremely helpful. Thank you. I think that that is great advice. That's helped. Well, me it's on pretty brief, but yeah. Well, well yeah. It, you know, what people do in preparing uh, for a crossing a bridge when they know that they have a fear of it, when they is get to to it. Do that is to do desensitization prior to uh, crossing the bridge or, or driving somewhere where there's a bridge that you have to cross. So you desensitize by imagining you're in the car and then uh, deep breathing and noticing how your body responds and then driving, imagine uh, driving across the bridge and, and doing the same thing, re repeating step-by-step step in the imagination, crossing the bridge and noticing your heart rate and your breathing and then uh, go into relaxation and then start again uh, through the process. So it's called desensitization. That's wonderful. Well, I know that's helped me with the flying. So that's uh, great. Right, advice. exactly. Yeah. You do and I try to make flying. that joke. Yeah, yeah. So desensitization to... works with any phobia. And I try to make this joke and no one laugh, but I'll say it again. Uh, I'm sure he'll cross that bridge when he gets to it. Uh, <laughs> If you if you keep uh, interrupting Dr. Deb, you might burn a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> we just, should just call this episode Madison County at this point, but <laughs> that would cover it. 
that would pretty well cover the topic, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Connect two things. I would say that's a, a draw. <laughs> Bridge. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. How, well, how much is this toll? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's a troll under it <laughs> oh goodness all right well oh, man would you is there one more that i'm missing i think that was a the, uh, well let me double check here that, that might be the only serious one we got yeah we got a lot of jokes uh okay well that was great i mean just to shout out to people that gave us the joke ones somebody said republicans somebody said how's Artie? <laughs> How's Artie? What is that? <laughs> uh, we've never had an Artie on the show. I don't know an Artie. I think it might be um, Artie Lang. I think he's in the news or something. Oh, I haven't heard anything. Well, I hope Artie's all right. And uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, writing in. The uh, Thank God nobody had another topic that was uh, ripe with puns. Uh <laughs> Uh, Dr. Deb, thank you truly so much for being here at such a late <laughs> You're hour. Welcome. That means it means a lot. And honestly, the excitement you had about my move uh, topped Andrews. So, if yeah, I my, uh, Dr. Deb hyperventilated. <laughs> <laughs> I never see her that that excited before, and I've uh, well, you know. Seen... I was uh, I was just thinking how nice that will be. You know, more convenient for the two of you. Uh, when you yeah. get together and things yeah well i'm excited because uh, we talked about this uh he and i used to hang out unrelated to the show and just because we were good friends and do normal people stuff and we haven't gotten to do that so i'm excited about that yeah because it would be yeah. too much of a time commitment to not be like oh I might as well record if we're hanging out because yeah um, it was actually shorter to go to virginia for him <laughs> <laughs> believe it yeah Sometimes I'm like, by the time I got to your house, I could have gone to Philly or something. You know, <laughs> I'm still in New York City. Oh man! Yeah, that'll be nice. That'll be nice. And things are opening up up in New York, so things mm -hmm. are looking up. Right? It's gonna be a big month. Every like, you know, the tide has turned. I know Europe is shutting down again, but they don't have vaccines like we do. Right. So we're uh, we're back in business, baby. We're doing it. And uh, thank you again, Dr. Deb, for being You're here. You're welcome. It, it's uh, always a, an honor. And uh, uh, Andrew, do you have anything else uh, before we wrap up? No, it was a great episode. And um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, I think I popped a blood vessel thinking <laughs> just now. <laughs> I think you hurt yourself trying to get to another bridge pun. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know how to bridge all this together, but. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you found another one. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, it was a great time, man. Great news. Super excited great for up. the next chapter in both of our lives because it'll affect me, too. And I'm yeah, glad, like an, um, you know, it's going to be awesome. Can't wait, and uh, this was a fun up. And and uh, for those who are watching the YouTube, you see that I have the brain still upside down from last night's live show. What a good time that was! Thanks again, everybody, for being there. And uh, and I'll, I'll reprise my joke where at toward the end I wasn't making a little bit of sense because <laughs> I I one I was I had a lot of sun and I had beer and uh, Stephen turned the thing upside down and I said that's uh, my brain turned up. I guess I just killed the joke, but I, I said uh, the Fresh Prince thing. Yes. That's, that's my brain turned up, flips upside down. It wasn't, I should have just left it in the live show. Uh, why don't you just take a minute and sit right there while I tell you, uh, <laughs> tell you why you shouldn't have brought that joke back from the Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, once again, Patreon, five bucks a month. Uh, you get uh, bonus episodes and please, if you haven't already subscribe to our YouTube. Yeah. We see the subscriptions coming in. So keep them coming boys. We're almost at a 100. Yes. And girls. And girls. <laughs> we love you. And stay tuned for next week. Stay tuned everybody. <laughs> hey everybody. Welcome to another bonus. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>